Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm playing in the brand new tier 10 American heavy tank, it is the M5Y and today I'm going to be letting you know why this is my kind of tank. I knew right from my first games in this tank with the surprise introduction of the Yo heavy tank tech tree in my full tank review of the M5Y that this was a kind of vehicle that I synergized with. It's relatively fast, it's got a good power to weight ratio, it's got good gun handling which means that I don't really feel that I have to use vertical stabilizers on this tank when I'm using the smaller caliber gun. Combine that with a freaky kind of turret that can expose itself but not at 100% uh, safety and just this is my kind of pressure vehicle. Combine that with not the best damage per minute but certainly not the worst and this really does feel like an all purpose heavy tank and with the alpha damage on it which is the lowest of any tier 10 heavy if you use the 105 millimeter gun which i thoroughly would recommend that you do use on this tank i really feel like i can just out trade my opponents at least with regards to these micro engagements the real success that i've had in this vehicle is where i use it to take on heavy tanks that just feel so much more cumbersome and it really does feel as if it's like a medium heavy rather than that true heavy heavy a lot of people might think, well, why don't you love the Super Conqueror? And I think the reason why I don't love the Super Conqueror is it's just a little bit too slow. And also, the Super Conqueror just has an awful lower plate, which this vehicle doesn't have. And so when you get the tank into a nice matchup and you're playing against Tier 8s or even Tier 9s, which have relatively poor penetration, you can actually end up exposing more of your lower plate than you would expect to in other vehicles. Now, all of these advantages do come at some rather substantial costs. As I eventually mentioned in my tank review, when you're pointing your gun at your opponents, because your turret is locked to the gun, you always have a weak point exposed. But so what? Just go for it. Go take the fight to the enemy team, get stuck in, and hopefully you're still going to be able to do more damage to them than they are able to do to you. It's this kind of like knife fighting vehicle. It is not a tank for somebody who wants to have utter protection or utter precision on a ridgeline. If you want that, then go and play a Super Conqueror and use your 10 degrees of gun depression and more or less nobody's going through your turret at least reliably. On this thing, if they do hit that weak point on top, they are easily going to be able to go into it. Do you want to play something with an autoloader with better DPM and better gun depression that's absolutely flavor of the month? Well, go play a Cranvong. But unlike the Cranvong, this tank will occasionally be able to ricochet off its hull and it can manage to side scrape at least reasonably successfully. And of course, having that reserve track mechanic, as you can see just over here to the right of the reticle, means that your opponents can't manage to lock you down so reliably. And so this vehicle, if you enjoy the Super Conqueror and if you enjoy the T125, it's kind of a hybrid of both of those tanks. It's a T125 that sacrifices alpha damage, DPM, and by the way, I must stop for a second and say that this was the, by far the worst play I made in this entire battle. I just drove around that corner thinking, oh, I should be okay to be able to go and get into a better position to engage the Badger. And luckily, my armor was very forgiving there. As we ricochet a Udez, we ricochet a T95, and we also absorb most of the damage from the high explosive round against the T. Uh, T30 there and luckily we're able to get at least one round into the Ag Tiger a split second from being able to finish off that tank. So back to what I was saying and that, that this tank is pretty much a Super Conqueror mixed with a T125. It has the gun depression of a Super Conqueror, kind of has the uh, the hold down capacity nearly of a Super Conqueror as well because everybody who's played the T125 will know just how awful that vehicle is when it's exposing the weak point on top. If you're exposing the weak point on the T125 and your opponents aren't lower tier than you, then they are pretty much going to go through that every single time. So it's of massive concern. That's something that I feel that the M5Y mitigates substantially by having a tiny weak point on top compared to the T125. And so it just gives it that kind of best of both worlds flavor. There's no doubt, however, that the vehicle is not exactly performing incredibly well with regards to its statistics. It's got, I think, about a 49.5% win ratio currently on the European server, so I guess thumbs up to Wargaming for putting in a balanced vehicle rather than just a flat-out overpowered one. But I still think the tank is different enough that I really wanted to talk about just my experiences in the vehicle now that I've played either 50 or 100 more games 
than I did in my tank review. And why, if you enjoy gameplay of the T125 or the Super Conqueror, that you might end up enjoying this one as well, especially if you're an aggressive player that likes to push the tempo on your opponents and just be constantly firing. The 105mm gun on this tank, it's, it's both the best thing about the tank and also the worst thing about the tank. And I'm going to take a risk here to try and get the side of the T95 knowing that I've locked them in place. I, th I feel like it's going to be a good trade of my hit points just to be able to get through this position, especially in a game which looks like it's going to be a win. And knowing that the T95 doesn't have the durability module means that I can just lock down their tracks and absolutely profit off, off the entirety of this American tank destroyer. And so yes, it's, that, it's this kind of blend of the Super Conqueror T110E5 gameplay. As I was talking about with 105mm, it's both the best and the worst thing about the tank. It's the best thing because it allows you to put in multiple rounds for every time even some of the faster firing heavy tanks shoot you. Are you engaging a Super Conqueror? Are you engaging a Chieftain on the enemy team? Well, you can easily fire two shells for every time they engage you. I make a little bit of a, a mistake here going too far forwards. Again, second one in this gameplay. But luckily, it looks like my hull armor is going to be able to keep me alive against the Char Future 4, even from the side. AMX spotted at the back. Can't believe I was unable to be able to see that tank. Maybe they peered around the corner to be able to get more of a shot. But even with the mistakes that I'm making in this game, it's just that all-round derpy armor on the vehicle that just seems to allow you to get away with playing aggressively and maybe playing loose. And if I can get away with making mistakes that might mean that you're able to get away with more mistakes in this tank than for example you could do in a super conqueror so a lot of people will immediately be saying well qb why don't you try and use the higher alpha damage gun on this tank if you feel that the 105 maybe just doesn't have the alpha damage in certain situations on a ridgeline and it's just really not worth the sacrifice you lose damage per minute you lose penetration on your standard rounds and your premium rounds you lose your gun handling you lose pretty much everything that i feel kind of makes this tank special and so by all means spend the 300 000 credits on the 120 millimeter try the tank a few times if you find that it's your kind of play style then go for it but i would also question why you're playing this tank in the first place if you don't want to tr try and take advantages of the e excellent rate of fire and to have that kind of oppressive assault kind of style on this tank where you just keep taking the fight to the enemy team and it will freak them out a lot let me tell you when you have this sitting in front of you putting on crazy pressure with its 105 another thing i want to highlight about the m5y is definitely its speed compared to the super conqueror I personally use a turbocharger on this vehicle with the 105mm because its turret traverse dispersion is so darn good. Now, if you, the only thing that might lack on this vehicle if you're using the 105mm with regards to dispersion values would be the, the movement dispersion or when you turn the hull. Accordingly, you, you could try and mitigate that by using a smooth ride on your driver, which will help. But also, if you really are flush with credits and you want to play this thing to the max without actually having to spend bonds, then you could also use uh, the directive that doubles the effect of smooth ride. And then you've got minus 15% dispersion while you're moving, not when you're turning the turret, and also while you're turning the hull. And um, that is absolutely fantastic. And it can allow you then to drop the vert stabs to still pump up the DPM with the gun rammer and the vents, and also still have the turbo, because I really feel like it's important on this tank. Do you notice how I get into position at the same time as the other, shall we say, aggressive heavy tanks on the enemy team? You're seeing the 277, you're seeing the VZ-55. If I wasn't using the turbo, I would have kind of been back with the Super Conqueror. And while the Super Conqueror managed to get there without actually losing any hit points, it was probably because I'm up on this ridgeline stopping the 277 from getting into a position and also stopping the VZ-55 from being, feeling comfortable. And so I would thoroughly recommend considering what you want to focus on with this vehicle. For me personally, I've managed to make it work quite successfully by making it uh, this kind of pressure heavy tank, which has better DPM than a vehicle like the 277, better gun depression, and enough armor to still be able to make him wince. You can see I'm trying to really sneak in those extra shots, and that's where this 105 millimeter feels great. 277 bounces off you, slap them twice. That is what you have to do. VZ-55 whiffs a couple of shells, will go all in and shoot them probably three, four, or even maybe even five times before they manage to reload, but then be very careful because they're going to punish you for a thousand damage in two seconds, right? 
So in this scenario, I'm trying to be a little bit aggressive, trying to get a few cheeky shots in, because I don't want the E100 to feel comfortable. I don't want the VZ to feel comfortable, because if they do, then they're going to pressure my team. And we see the E100 is actually going to decide to try and reverse out of this scenario, but because they're boosting their hit points, which we can clearly tell, that also means that their tracks are incredibly healthy, which means that we're in a bit of an awkward situation with not being able to lock the tank down in the open. There we can see the side scraping potential or just getting shot in the side of the tracks of this thing. It does have very good side armor. And while we lose both of our tracks in that engagement, we can still keep moving a little bit with the reserve track, which allows us to get another shot into the 100. Now, there is one thing I want to highlight about this tank, uh, and that is that it actually ends up being incredibly expensive to play. The fact that you've got this really good rate of fire on this tank and the fact that quite often you're having to fire quite a lot of gold at your opponents to be able to go through their turrets or because you're sitting on a ridge line or even just to have the extra chance of being able to go through their hull armor because of the relatively poor penetration on the gold rounds together although the standard penetration on this tank is rather nice the gold rounds they're not the same as the 340 pen that you would have on for example the 277 or even the 330 that you get on many of the medium tanks they do ricochet quite a fair bit and considering that you're firing the rounds so darn often with a good rate of fire and they're still very expensive indeed i have ended up kind of only just breaking even playing this tank when i'm using a premium consumable that i'm purchasing at half price so don't think that this tank is going to be a cheap one to play i feel like to maximize this vehicle maybe you can try and mitigate the cost a little bit with intuition but it definitely has felt like one of the more expensive tanks to play so I'm deciding that I don't really want to go in against the E100, the Jagdpanzer E100, and the VZ55 there. It feels like a bit of a stalemate. So why don't I go and try and punish the medium tanks? And oh my word, AMX13105. I give them a little bit of a ram. I give them one shot of damage there. And I'm trying to put some pressure on them. And we actually managed to ricochet two shells from the 13105. That's something that I don't really feel a super conqueror would do. And we put three shots in. That was 1,200 damage that we dealt to the AMX-13105. And unfortunately for me, my E-100s and my Super Conquerors weren't reloaded to be able to go after them. The 277 pings the map as to where the 13105 is. And talking about E-100s, I'm going to be able to start to make my way against them. I'm looking for a shot here. I've actually bounced the E-100 there, which is lovely. And I'm going to go up and try and put a, a regular round into their lower plate. And I'm going to start reloading a gold round because I didn't think I was going to have a clean shot into the lower plate. I thought he would reverse an angle. A nice second round there. A little bit of overkill to fire gold. And I'm going to make my worst play of this game so far. Although I felt like in this situation, with the game being neck and neck, with five kills aside and the hit points being so close, that I really had to just gun my way through this opportunity before the Leopard or the M60 or even the Manticore or the Artillery could be able to engage me. In retrospect, I probably could have tried to side scrape there. I probably didn't need to push the tempo nearly so much on the E100. But I still get to take them out the game and put four rounds in for the one round that I received. And now that's put me in pole position to be able to hopefully deal with this M60 and this Leopard. So I'm going to come around the corner before the Manticore gets into position. I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait till I'm a little bit closer and fire when I think that they're going to react. Now I realize there's a Leopard behind me so I don't ram the M60. I whiz back, I put another cheeky round in. That's what people don't expect about this tank. The fact that I'm out trading mediums... Mediums that have higher alpha damage than me, but they don't have a better rate of fire than me because of it. If I was playing the T-110E5 in that situation, I don't think I would have got the second round out against my opponent. Although, now, 7,000 damage, six minutes into this game, it's down to playing a support role with the FE-4005, who has over a quarter of our hit points left, more like a third. Talking about a third of their hit points, that's what they removed from the Leopard there, shutting them down. Great stuff nice kind of synergy here. I'm protecting them while they reload to stop the M60 from following up for the gargantuan 183mm shell that needs to be put back in the tank. And there's a manticore now sneaking up. And I'm going to put a clutch shell into their turret. And that's another thing that I must highlight about this tank. That while the heat rounds are quite expensive and the, the tank does end up costing quite a lot of credits, I love these APCR rounds as standard and I can't believe I haven't mentioned it until now. Having this 1,472 meters a second shell velocity allows you to make clutch shells against your opponents and that's what I love. This feeling of a medium tank mixed with a heavy tank hybrid. 
It's kind of this heavy medium vehicle, and I think if you set the vehicle up in such a way as to play that kind of medium heavy role, I think that's where you can be successful in this tank. I'm gonna pop around the corner, unable to find the leopard. I'm gonna back up this Fosh, who's a one shot, so I'm hoping they're not gonna get clubbed as they manage to get this leopard here. However, they do, they manage to shut down the Fosh B. And this game, it's still fairly close, but not with that extra shot. And I should be able to snapshot this leopard. And there we go, right into the side of the turret. Now up to five kills and just shy of 8,000 damage. But now there's a Jagdpanzer 100 coming after us. Put a round into the lower plate, reverse up. My team are doing a really good job of nailing them in the side. I'm going to hopefully put another round into the cheeks, but I've got very bad heat pen, so I'm unable to do that. The FV tells me to retreat, and oh dear. Yeah, that's a high explosive anti-tank round entering the side of my vehicle. And I can tell you exactly where it went in. It actually ended up hitting the support for the turret that we can see along the side here. And that is a significant weak point against very high penetration premium rounds on the new tier 10 American heavy tank. So our first game on Ghost Town was an ace tanker for our 1,400 base experience, 5,004 damage, nearly 3,000 spotting, 8,000 combined in this relatively short seven minute round. Only just lost credits, albeit with a premium account. In that round and the follow up on Pearl River was another ace tanker, this time 1,421 base experience for our 8,000 damage dealt and 1,000 assistance. And yeah, only just broke even, even though I felt like it's not like I was spamming heat too liberally. This definitely ends up being one of the most expensive tanks that I've ever played because of that, because I feel like unlike medium tanks that also have great rates of fire and do need to fire a good amount of heat, this vehicle's just a little bit slower and unable to control the pace of the engagement. And so quite often it has to compensate to have a higher amount of penetration. And one thing I'd like to highlight in both of these games is that in the second one, we blocked 3,500 damage. And in the first game, we blocked 2,000 damage, enough to be able to vanquish this vehicle. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, this vehicle truly is my kind of tank. It's this all-purpose heavy medium vehicle that is kind of one of the best all-rounders in World of Tanks that if you're like me and you like to play that aggressive frontline role then this is a tank that can kind of back it up. And I'm just surprised that the statistics of this tank, at least on the European server in the last 60 days, are not more impressive. It's starting to slip to a win ratio where it's approaching the 60 TP level and considering that it's a new tank and usually when vehicles are first released only the better players are playing them I personally expected its win ratio to be a little bit higher and considering that it's already averaging less damage than the Super Conqueror and its win ratio is substantially less even though in theory all those hardcore meta players are currently enjoying the vehicle I think there's no doubt that this one at least holistically across the player base, is inferior to a tank like the Super Conqueror. So I guess we should give congratulations to Wargaming for introducing not only a vehicle that has a new mechanic, not only a vehicle that definitely feels like it has its own role on the battlefield, but one that importantly is not just flat out breaking the matchmaker. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And considering that the Manticore is now top of the tree and there's a lot of interest in the British light tanks, <laughs> who, who's better to feature all of the British light tanks than a silly Brit like me? So come along as I'm going to start at tier 1, work my way up to tier 10, so you can see if the sneaky British light tanks with, in theory, their battleship guns uh, are actually very meta at the moment. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.